Hi, I'm John Kachoy and I'm the literary manager of Australian Plays. Uh, and we're talking to a, a group of young writers from the west of Sydney, Western Sydney, uh, who are collectively doing a project uh, as part of the play festival called True West. I'll let them introduce themselves, but they're three really interesting writers and uh, we're going to hear more about the works that they've been developing at the play festival. Uh, so let us know who you are and um, what you're working on. I'm James Zalazi and I'm working on a play called Miriam. Um, my name is Monica Leah, and I'm working on a play called Nana and Berta. Uh, my name's Nick Atkins, and I'm working on a play called Boom. Great. Um, so we'll start with you, James. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about your play and how it started? Sure. Uh, my play is about um, a woman that comes from Lebanon uh, with her son and her husband. Uh, she comes to Sydney, and it's um, an abusive relationship. And so she struggles and she goes through the trials and tribulations of leaving her husband, um, but she leaves her child with him. She's got no other choice. And then she meets a few you know, friends along the way that sort of help her, you know, and allow her to you know, realise that she doesn't have to become a product of the environment or the situation. And she learns to you know, adapt to that world. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And how long have you been working on this? About five yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. And has what you're interested in uh, changed a lot over that time, or you've sort of stayed fairly? The core of the play um, is the same, yeah. but the structure has, you know, developed and changed a little bit. Yeah. You know, um, allowing you know the characters not to be two D rather than three D and have their own voice yeah. in development throughout the, the story. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Monica, tell us about your work that you're working on here and um, how it started. Okay, um, I'm producing a comedy play, and as I said, it's called Nana and Berta, and it's about two Assyrian grandmothers. Um, they have a favourite television show called Secrets of Summer, which is a soap opera, and they find out that the favourite character from that show is going to be killed off. And so they're absolutely outraged, and they go on this massive adventure um, to try to save their favourite character. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much the essence of it. And how did that start for you? Did you start with the characters, with an image with dialogue? Um, I always find that I start with characters. I usually start with like a conversation between two characters and just see where that kind of takes me. So even though the play is centered on these two women, um, the there is some focus on Nana, who's the central character, and her relationship with her grandson, who's currently living with her and will eventually move out. And so one of the first things I wrote was a scene between Nana and her grandson, building a kind of tension that would exist in their house, me imagining like an Assyrian home um, and the dynamics in the family. And then from there, I kind of realized that I needed to give a space for Robbie, who's her grandson, and then a space for Nana. And the space for Robbie was his perfume shop and the space for Nana was this soap opera. Um, and then... As it went on, um, her relationship with Berta, who's her best friend, started to develop, started to develop um, and then it's kind of taken in this direction where it's like this big adventure of like saving something that they love. Great, thank you. Um, and Nick, tell us about your work and how it started. Yeah, cool. Um, so as I said, I'm writing a play called Boom. The story is, it's driven by two characters, Fred and Simon, who are both terrified of being forgotten. And their fear of being forgotten leads them to a whole ser series of actions that will cause them to be possibly remembered for the wrong reasons. So it's about uh, compromising, and it's about moments when you realise you've compromised so much that you're no longer proud of what you were trying to create. And uh, I suppose once you have that realisation, what you do with it. So, um, yeah, uh, Fred and Simon are also in a relationship, or they were in a relationship, so... The play is set in two different time periods that are five years apart. Uh, one moment where they meet each other, and then another moment when they've kind of, after they've been in a relationship and after they've broken up. Yeah. yeah interesting. Um, and so, uh, you know, for all of you working on this process, what has it been like to work on the play festival process itself? How, what is it, what does it involve? We might sort of, sorry, back to you, Jane, and go, and go through. Um, I think, uh, it's, it's an amazing opportunity for me and my play, um, working with those creatives and uh, you know, the group of actors that are on that table. Um, it's sort of, um, you know, it's a collection of views and you take 
you know, the, the things that you, you think will impact your play and just better it. Mm. And you, you, you take that on board and you work with it. I think, yeah, yeah so it's, a, it's a fantastic opportunity. And so have you had structural changes or kind of formal changes to, to the work, even though you said the, the sort of central tenant is? Probably a lot of structural, yeah. structural changes. Um, I think more so allowing one of the characters that helps Miriam along the way when she decides to leave her husband because that's a huge thing and it's set in the 70s it's unheard of yeah. for a Lebanese woman to leave her, her husband um, so I think you know allow, allowing that the voice of the, the person the friend that helps her who's Australian um, is huge and I think I needed to explore that a little bit more okay. and Monica has has the process changed your your piece and um, I think the, I, I have lots of fun writing dialogue and I have lots of fun writing comedy, um, but I think this process has allowed me to bring a lot more focus to the work and really consider structure. Um, today we had one of the first conversations about scenes that didn't necessarily need comedy to drive them um, and scenes where the characters could let themselves sort of take a hit um, and react to that. Um, so I think taking a look at structure has been really helpful in this process and also taking a look at how the, the play sits overall. Um, I've today for the first time been able to examine what parts of the play are the first act, what parts are the second and third. Um, usually when I write it's just a scene here, a scene there, so I think the most important thing that's come to play is understanding how these things fit together, understanding where the characters are left with. Um, and really earning those like victory moments where something really great happens um, by prefacing it with a kind of loss or with like a hit. Mm. So that's been probably the most valuable thing that I've yeah. And Nick, since you started writing the work, has your interest in it shifted? Yeah, completely. Um, I think the really exciting thing for me about coming into this week um, and the kind of context of the play festival and, and you know environments like this is that because you know, or I've been lucky enough to have a team of really supportive artists around me, I can bring into the room things that I really don't know if they're going to work. Like, I don't need to try and perfect it. And in fact, I think coming into this week, I really picked apart what I thought I was doing and tried to offer something up that was probably a bit more riskier or a little bit um, less safe because I knew if, um, I had people that would help walk me through it. So that, that was really beneficial and has been really great so far. Um, I think the other question was about change, mm. things change. So, and as a result of starting there, things have changed heaps. I, I came in on the first day um, and had a work that had a lot of potential and needed a lot more writing into. And I came in on the second day to discover that I probably need to cut back a lot now. <laughs> um, but that's, again, that's the uh, really constructive thing about this kind of process is that um, there's uh, those people to help you find your way through it. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Um, so this is kind of an open question, but you know this is presented under the banner of kind of this thing called True West, which is mm -hmm. a bit of a snapshot of contemporary writing from from Western Sydney. Western Sydney feels like it's renegotiating its relationship to to the rest of Sydney at the moment. You know, given things like the National Theatre of Parramatta and um, you know the political shifts, how has that location or, or your relationship to it um, influenced your writing? I think it's huge. I think, um, you know, coming from the West, true West, I think that you take all the connotations of living in the West and your surroundings, and you try to sort of find a balance with adapting to it, whilst also creating a piece of work that is universal in a way. I'm sure, you know, you, Monica and Nick feel the same way. You want your work to resonate with, a, 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 like, universally mm -hmm. rather than specific pockets of Sydney or Australia. Yeah. Um, in terms of like Western Sydney and where it sits in the spectrum of the arts, I think it's definitely sort of gaining more of a footing. Um, I think the most valuable thing about that is just that other than speaking to universality, um, I think it's sort of getting an encouragement from your community um, and getting access to resources from your community to be able to write about that space. Um, so even though my play is a comedy and it's about two grandmas going on an adventure, at the focus of it I am examining 
um, the life of a refugee family and what it's like to have an experience and then be settled in Australia and sort of moving forward with that and forming sort of a space for yourself in that. Um, and I think that I wouldn't be able to produce something like this if I was working in another space. I think the great thing about the Western Sydney art movements that are taking place is that they're not just seeking to build bridges to other art spaces, but they're also seeking to empower the kinds of stories that can come out of Western Sydney. Um, and Western Sydney is home to culturally and linguistically diverse individuals. Um, and they have the potential to tell stories that you wouldn't necessarily see on stage. I mean, the thing I keep hearing um, every time my play gets read out is that people have some kind of connection to it if they're from a home that isn't an English-speaking home. Um, but also that people don't expect to see characters behaving in this way. Um, and that doesn't necessarily speak to myself as a writer, but it speaks to the community that I'm participating in that's encouraging um, an honest examination um, of people living in that space and their kind of interactions with one another. So I think it's offering up something new, um, which is fantastic, um, but it's also centred on the community and not just trying to blend in to the rest of Sydney arts. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I need to, my disclaimer is that I currently don't live in Western Sydney and I need to purge that. Um, I, I, it's my mean girl's moment if she doesn't even go here. Um, I grew up Do you in West, live? Uh, I live in Asheville. Um, I grew up in Western Sydney, I lived there for a long time, um, and I still work in there. So I've always kind of been, so I'm from Emmy Plains, from Penrith. Um, yeah, and I, I, like, I continue to work there. I'm the director of new work for Q Theatre, which sits as part of Penrith Performing and Visual Arts. So I've always, always either lived in uh, Penrith or been working directly on the ground. That's my, my like, wash myself and make sure that I'm not, I'm not lying to anyone, I promise. Don't put that online. Um, uh, no, but when it comes to Western Sydney, I think it's really important that we're talking about Western Sydney's in the plural. Western Sydney is a huge place, um, and we're going through a bit of an awkward moment where I think we, we need to collect it because we need to work together to kind of have, um, to build a community, but... Uh, we can't lose the, the diversity of the communities that live in the region and the regions. Um, Penrith is very different to Campbelltown, to Parramatta, to Kasula, to Fairfield. Um, and the work that National Theatre of Parramatta is doing is really great. But so is the work of UTP and Blacktown Arts Centre mm -hmm. and Campbelltown Arts and, and Kasula Powerhouse and Q Theatre at the Joan. Um, and so I suppose all of, when it comes to Western Sydney, I, I always am just really keen to communicate um, the large communities that are incredibly diverse along lots of different lines from um, their faith to culture to their socioeconomic status to their sexuality to their political inclinations um, and that's also what's really exciting about it is that there's all these communities living very very close to each other um, so to work within those communities and to create art for those communities um, I just think that's really exciting because of the intersections of audiences so yeah it's probably the audiences that uh, are exciting me most about the, the context that I work in, um, and they're the sort of audiences that I want to be making work for. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I think it's particularly easy in Sydney to become isolated in your particular pocket, you know, and to, and to other or to um, you know to distance places. Like I, I visited Manly a few days. I'm from Sydney originally, but uh, you know, I would I caught the ferries since I was ten. Yeah, you know that weird idea of it. There's a whole swathe of this city that I just don't, don't visit and haven't visited since a child. Mm. And it feels like you're somewhere else. Yeah, you really, yeah. really do. And I imagine that that, like, certainly, you know, that potentially a lot of people's experience of the west of Sydney or anywhere past Strathfield or something, you know. Mm. Um, so do you feel like interacting with uh, with somewhere like Playwriting Australia or all the, 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 you know, the city-based companies, um, well, what's your, been your experience of that? Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's important to have that connection. I think a voice needs to be given to certain societies, um, Nick, Nick touched on it, that wouldn't necessarily have the means to voice their stories. And so I think connecting with, um, you know, Playwriting Australia or Darling the Theatre or whatever means comes, you know, happens to come across, I think it's important. I think there are many many stories that have not been told and won't necessarily be told unless somebody taps into that um, in Western Sydney mm -hmm. and um, brings it out, I think. But if we all need to work together, I think, 
with like money. Is that I think it's important to, you know, for all of us to sort of, you know, touch on each other's work and sort of figure out, yep, they're doing that, but we're all interconnected. It's all, you know, the same goal really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just lastly, I think from, from each of you, and maybe going Nick that way, what's currently exciting you the most about your own work, given that you're about to sort of have at least a, an extract of it come and to meet an audience? What's most exciting for you? Yeah. Um, I just got, can I just say one thing on the uh, Eastern Suburbs thing? Don't, not in a bad way. Um, I just think uh, when we're talking about um, arts conversations between Western Sydney and say inner city or even the national stage, I don't. It, it's important that we don't get stuck into an us and them kind of discussion. I just think there's something really exciting about the little ecosystem that's occurring in Western Sydney at the moment. If you don't need to put that in, I just needed to purge it for my own. No, <laughs> but it's interesting because um, I think you, risks going like something like this risks going. Oh look, his his three people we let in the building. Yes. And then we don't go beyond that yes. connection. We tick that little box. Don't yeah, know, totally. I suppose the question was about that. Yeah. yeah, and I thought it... And you don't I, want to fetishise it or anthropology. No, or, yeah. you know. no, totally. Um, anyway, that's all. And yeah. it, it just don't want to get into the... Yeah. No, I'm just curious. Whole you know, side of it's just curious how you connect, you know. Yeah, totally. I was going to say, just in terms of the work, the priorities have significantly shifted in this room versus the room that was in Parramatta. In Parramatta, there was a lot of conversation about the culture that was existing in my play and the kind of conversations that the characters were having and their experiences. Whereas in this space, um, not that they didn't focus on structure, but it's funny that the priorities shift. I mean, they just kind of take for granted that I know the Assyrian culture. They take for granted that I understand the refugee um, angle. Mm -hmm. And there isn't as much conversation around that. It's more conversations about the comedy and whether it's working conversations about the structure mm -hmm. and the plot and whether this is going to carry through and what kind of reaction it's going to generate. So it's just funny to see the different priorities. In reality, both are needed. Mm -hmm. I, I, there needs to be a focus on how this is going to do commercially. There needs to be a focus on how this is going to carry through um, in terms of the structure, but there also needs to be consideration for um, the kind of cultural experience that I'm creating with this work. And I guess that's the strengths of the two communities and then working together. But yeah, but if, if there's a focus on the work in terms of what I've gained in this, it's, it's been that. Yeah. yeah. I think that is the challenge anytime you're, whether you like it or not, anytime yeah. you're put forward as a representative yeah. of something yeah. somewhere or some group, yeah. that's a lot of uh, pressure. Lot of, and that's, yeah. that's why it's quite lovely to be working alongside these guys as well. Because yeah. as I said before, when we're talking about Western Sydney's, it just always feels really necessary that there's kind of a pluralism mm -hmm. yeah. in the room of voices. It's really tough to yeah. send one artist under that banner. Um, yeah, but to get to the question that I interrupted yeah. partly, it's um, what's exciting me about my work at the moment is that I think it's a more ambitious work for me, and it's ambitious because I'm a little bit lost in it at the moment, and I'm just trying to be okay with that. <laughs> I think normally I approach work um, in a way that's very controlled and very formulaic, and I think it's going to be successful, and I think I know how I'm going to get there, whereas with this particular story and this script, I'm just trying to let myself... Um, ask some bigger questions and not know all the answers straight away. So that's that's scary, but it's also really exciting for this particular play. Terror is good. Yes. <laughs> um, in terms of what's exciting me, honestly, it's just the privilege to be able to give voices to characters that we don't regularly see. I mean, we don't usually see nanas up on stage and we don't usually see Assyrian nanas up on stage, let alone Assyrians. So I think that's probably the most exciting thing, whether this goes on to be something else or not. It's, it's nice to be focused in on a conversation that I want to have and it's nice to be able to have a space where others can engage with that conversation. So whether this continues forward or not, it's it's really wonderful to be working as part of a workshop where people are focused on the best way that I can get what I want across and then to be able to have the opportunity as part of True West on Friday to have people being able to listen on these characters. Because I mean, I'm getting a little like personal with this. Most people don't know what an Assyrian person is. <laughs> they assume I'm saying Syrian and there's this whole clarification that takes process, that takes place, sorry. Um, and then also the conversation around refugees usually is centered like on that experience of suffering or that experience of sacrifice. And so to have people that are settled and engaging with the community and contributing to the community without sort of um, like, a, like a combination of their identity is the Australian and the Assyrian identity and how that threads through. So I think the most exciting thing is the privilege to be able to give that experience for others to see. 
I've forgotten the question. I'm what, sorry. Right. <laughs> what's, um, what's exciting, what's exciting you about, sorry. you know, what you're writing at the moment? <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this um, weekend, it's about to meet some, it's about to have some people listening to it. Yeah, what you, what okay. You, what are you thrilled about? Um, I'm excited to um, open up a can of worms about domestic violence <laughs> in my community. Um, I think it's really taboo at the moment. It, actually, it's always been taboo. It's been, um, it's unspoken of a lot of the time, especially in the, in the Lebanese community. Um, and I think that shining a light on it is essential. Um, however, you know, and it still happens now, even though my play is set in the 70s. I, I still think it's so relevant to today as well. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you.